Welcome to Survivor Scale, the show where we break down all of War's greatest characters to find out who has the skills, experience, and mentality to be the ultimate survivor. I'm H2 Mass, and today I'm breaking down every main character in David Robert Mitchell's 2014 incessantly irritating It Follows. Where a teenager contracts a sexually transmitted demon that pursues her without pause while being invisible to everyone else, forcing her to conjure the most twisted strategies if she wants any hope of surviving. The film kicks off with an impressive display of balance as we see a woman running from an unseen force while wearing high heels. Clearly distraught, she gets into her car and drives to the beach before sitting in the sand and calling her father, telling him the last thing he'd want to hear from his daughter on a downward spiral. I love you. Nothing good can come after that. And nothing does! The film then cuts to the next day and shows us the dark side of gymnastics. Damn! I wonder what happened to her. We then meet the real main character, Jay, as she prepares for a date with her new boyfriend, Hugh. Before Jay leaves though, a couple of her friends make their introductions as well, Paul doing so through a not so subtle hint at his affection for Jay and Yara through a fart. <laughs> On the date, Hugh points at a woman he sees standing in the entrance, but looks nervous when Jay can't seem to see her as well. Clearly not a cinephile, he grabs Jay and rushes out of the theater before the movie even starts, somehow suppressing Jay's suspicion of his erratic behavior with vague excuses. Oh, I just felt sick. It's very effective. Still willing to go on another date with him, Jay and Hugh drive to a lake where the two of them do some backseat backstrokes. Revealing the effects of his preparation, Hugh then takes a piece of cloth and drugs Jay until she falls unconscious, after which he ties her to a wheelchair and waits for her to wake back up, displaying his vigilance as he surveys the area. When Jay finally awakens, Hugh tells her that something that was passed on to him and that he just ejaculated into her will now follow her, shape-shifting into different people so it can get close. Making sure she understands, Hugh then rolls her to a nearby ledge and shows her what he saw at the movie theater, but now she can see it as well. Claiming to help her, but really just displaying his selfishness, he says that she should just do what he did to her and have sex with someone else to pass it on to another person, since it won't come after him until it's killed her and that it won't kill her if she's passed it on to someone else as well. It's not as complicated as it sounds. After Hugh takes Jay to her house, she talks to the cops about Hugh's misdeeds, but they can't seem to find him since he used a fake name to rent a house in the city and has now fled the scene, further demonstrating his immense preparation ability. I gotta admit, this man had a plan. While in class, Jay looks out the window and sees an old woman walking towards her without breaking eye contact even once. Taking Hugh's word seriously, Jay then rushes out of the room, but when she looks back, she sees the woman still approaching her, so she runs out of the building and drives away. After Jay tells him about the old woman, Paul offers to stay at her house to watch for anything suspicious, but as he and Jay have a lovely conversation about their childhood, someone rudely throws something through the window, forcing them to stop chatting. When Paul checks the kitchen, he sees nobody inside, but leaves the room to wake up Jay's sister to let her know what happened as well. Now alone, Jay then walks into the kitchen to get a look for herself, but ends up seeing a woman leaking pineapple juice walking towards her, so she displays caution by running into her bedroom and locking the door. A moment later, she hears Paul and her sister Kelly trying to get inside, so she opens it before quickly locking it again, only for Yara to knock on the door as well. Though Jay maintains her caution and tells them not to, Kelly opens the door anyway, after which Jay sees a basketball player cosplaying as a ghoul, so Jay displays some self-preservation and runs out of the house, gets on a bike, and rides to a nearby playground. When the rest of the gang finds her, Jay showcases a preparation ability and decides to find Hugh to learn more about her new situation. For some reason though, her unfamiliar neighbor Greg pops up and offers to drive them to the house where Hugh had supposedly been living. Inside, we see Hugh reaching to the top tier of preparation with a house retrofitted to help him evade the monster, employing empty cans to alert him of potential intruders. While taking a short horny break and removing some tissues to look through some Playboy magazines, Paul discovers a photo of Hugh wearing a high school jacket that may reveal his true origins and current location. Good on you, Paul. I wouldn't have even touched those magazines. The crew then go to his old high school and look through a series of yearbooks, after which they learn that Hugh's real name is Jeff Redmond. Before they leave though, Greg decides to make Paul uncomfortable by rubbing Jay's shoulder. Now that's just mean. 
When they find Jeff's house, he tells them that the creature only walks, but if it kills her, then it will go after him and then to whomever gave it to him and that she needs to sleep with someone else so it'll at least temporarily stop coming after her. When an unknown girl walks towards the group though, Jeff showcases some caution and points at her to make sure the others can see her as well, confirming that the creature hasn't caught up to them yet. But still wanting to keep the danger as far away as possible, Jeff tells them to leave. I'm sorry, you guys need to get the fuck out. Ending this interaction and leaving the paranoid planner with a penchant for Pepsi, in A tier. The crew then go to a house by the lake, where Greg gives Jay a gun to practice shooting, allowing her to demonstrate some solid accuracy. Later, as the original group relaxes on the beach, Greg goes elsewhere to release his stores of yellow liquid, and everything seems fine. Until Jay's hair starts floating and she begins screaming for help. As she struggles to escape, Paul acknowledges the invisible creature and smacks the space near Jay's head, only for the creature to eject him 30 feet away. After freeing herself from the creature's grip, Jay then runs into a nearby shed and grabs the gun. As she shoots at the creature though, she shows poor accuracy under pressure when she misses five straight shots before finally grazing it on the neck, only for it to get right back up. Jay then runs out of the shed and steals Greg's car, desperately driving away from the creature, moving at speeds on pace with an infant. And sadly, she shows her poor composure and awareness when she turns around and crashes into a mailbox, falling unconscious. Meh, her stock just plummeted. After waking up in a hospital and somehow avoiding the creature for who knows how many hours, Jay's becomes so desperate for self-preservation that she decides to pass the creature onto someone else, and she chooses Greg, much to the chagrin of Paul. Two days later, Greg showcases his skepticism and poor openness to the supernatural when he says that he hasn't seen anyone coming for him and doesn't seem to believe in the creature since he had been tinkling when it attacked the group. So he lets down his guard and everyone goes back home. Jay, however, contrasts Greg's inattentiveness and remains vigilant, watching Greg's house to see if anything strange will happen. Strangely, she sees Greg walking around outside without any shoes, but when he gets to his house, he throws a rock through the window and climbs inside, revealing that the creature has copied Greg's appearance. Jay tries to call him, but he doesn't answer, so she runs to his house and bangs on the door. When he still doesn't answer, she goes through the window as well, but before she can warn him of the danger, she finds someone banging on his bedroom door. When he finally opens it, the imposter, disguised as his mother, jumps on Greg and fucks the life out of him, leaving the unprepared pisser with poor paranoia in D tier. Jay then runs out of the house and drives away as the creature goes after her again. When she arrives at a lake shore, she sees some guys on a boat and starts disrobing, perhaps hinting at her growing sense of self-preservation by passing the creature onto some unsuspecting victims to buy her some time. Or maybe she just wants to take a swim. Who knows? When Jay gets back home, Paul says that she can pass it on to him since she's passed it on to someone else before. But instead of falling victim to Paul's penis, she declines his horny suggestion. After criticizing Jay for choosing to sleep with Greg over him, Paul develops a plan to defeat the creature, but they need to go to an indoor pool to enact it, leaving the effect of his preparation on hold. As they wait for the creature to arrive, they plug in a large number of electronic appliances and place them beside the pool. Jay then gets in the water to lure the creature inside and hopefully shock it after Jay escapes. Unfortunately though, Paul underestimated the creature's intelligence as it doesn't mindlessly walk into the water, but instead starts throwing the appliances at Jay. Did it just throw a TV? Fortunately, the electricity doesn't work. And as Jay points at the creature to show Paul where it is, he tries to shoot it. But his dumbass acts like he can't see through it and hits Yara instead. How did you hit her? She's not the invisible one. You were looking right at her. You couldn't see the creature. As they continue trying to hit the creature, Kelly shows some ingenuity and places a blanket on top of it, allowing them to see its outline so Paul can shoot it in the head, which drops it in the water. As Jay tries to get out though, the creature pulls her back under, but Paul showcases some great composure and accuracy by once again shooting it in the head as it holds onto Jay while swimming underwater. Now that's impressive. Jay then climbs out of the pool, and when she looks back, she just sees a huge cloud of blood spreading in the water. Is it dead? A bit later, Paul and Jay do some dirty deeds, and Paul, demonstrating some caution, drives by some prostitutes to potentially pass it on to someone else if they didn't manage to kill it earlier. As Paul and Jay walk down the street together, we see someone behind them doing what nobody but the mysterious creature would do on a sidewalk. Walking. Maybe it's not dead. Ooh. 
Cutting to black, the film ends with some unfinished business, leaving the forward friend with a frustrated phallus in A tier and the sexual student with a serious STD in B tier. But that's it. The average rank of this cast was B tier. A pretty solid collection of characters. While it may not have the popularity of some of horror's biggest franchises, It Follows still has one of the most creative and creepy antagonists in the genre, which, in my opinion, makes it one of the best horror movies of the century. Thanks for watching.